my friends and welcome back to L.A. Noir. In our last video, we did begin a new case called The Naked City. We have just arrived at the crime scene where it's um, death by morphine, I think is what our boss said, but I feel like those are normally called overdoses, unless of course it's murder by morphine, which would be different. <laughs> but let's go inside and see what's going on. I think the police officer on the outside said the second floor. Again, really nice lobby. I don't know if I'd want an apartment on the first floor. I feel like that, that could be troublesome. Apartment on the second floor, though. Can't wait to see what it looks like. <laughs> Me and my real estate obsession, I gotta stop. Uh, probably the open doorway is, is the crime scene. Bukowski, you made homicide. Oh, that wow. I did. Good to see you, Phelps. You two want a hug? How can we get on with this? <laughs> Relax, Rusty. 26 years old, fashion model. Found in the tub by the cleaning lady, Mrs. Reynoldson. She called it in. We heard Carruthers thinks- Carruthers likes to make work for people. Overdose of sleeping pills, falls asleep in the tub, rest in peace, case closed. Here, here. Mal is 100% that it's murder. Do you mind if I take a look around? Sure. Go right ahead. Oh, where are we? I'm like, where are we going? <laughs> it's like our our former partners are here. Oh, that's kind of cool. Now, I want to start out here. Ma'am. This is all top end of town stuff. Gives us somewhere to look. Oh, okay. Oh, there was nothing there. We didn't need to zoom in at all. Maybe one of the other ones has some secrety message. Could have been a modeling assignment. Hmm. It's place to start. Dustin. Maybe? 6582 Hollywood Boulevard. I'm working Tuesday, 11 to 4 p.m. Come keep me company. Ask for Ms. Randall. XXX Julia. Beautiful girl. Clothes certainly aren't from the Sears catalog. I, I would agree with that statement. Heard a fancy. Okay, um, I don't want to talk to the housekeeper, cleaning lady, one of those two maybe. Yeah, nice living room, dining room setup. Fairly large kitchen. What is that noise? I don't think a soup ladle <laughs> is of any importance. smarter man than me to connect that. <laughs> Probably nothing. Hosta spoon or something? Maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, let's not be crazy. Okay. Ironing board. Okay. Oh, oh, oh my. Oh. Phelps? Well, we've had a look around. Rusty thinks it's a waste of time. What's your theory? Come on, Mal. Tell us why we were dragged down here. <laughs> if the victim was alive when she entered the tub, water would have entered her lungs. The water is violently churned in the windpipe as she drowns. The result is that a lot of foam is generated. This foam is found at the mouth and nostrils in almost all cases of real drowning. Notice anything about our Vic? May I took a look? Be my guest. She has no foam around her mouth? Looks like she has a bite mark on her arm. Take a closer look at her head and neck. Yeah. Ch choke, choke, choking or something. I. Why is it not doing anything? Like. Oh, there's a very ring. unusual ring. 
Oh, and her fingernails Could be are broken. Wrong, but it looks like a black sapphire. Bruising on the forearms, and these look like bite marks. Very good. Yeah, I, I like how Cole's face is reflected in the, the tile, because in theory that would actually happen, right? <laughs> and I, there's a bunch of pills right there on the ground. Oh, oh there we go, finally. Her neck is bruised pretty badly. The eyes are a classic sign of morphine, and the bruises tell their own story. I think one man held her down and another held her arm and injected her. They put her in the bath to try to cover it as a drowning and spread a trail of barbiturates. Take a look around outside on your way out and see if you can find the Sorettes. It would make my theory. And morphine would have been very quick and there wouldn't have been much of a struggle. Okay, so find two guys who recently bought Sorettes and weren't junkies and you might be onto something. Hmm. This is her in these photos. No, I don't want to look at the body. I'm going to look around. Yes. I gotta get to I, see anything on the floor. Miss Julie w was. Pretty girl like that. Maybe she was having trouble with some boys, huh? Maybe this isn't what we're looking broken. for. No, it's just she a hairbrush. So she ran herself a bath and down some pills, okay. and then she just drifted off. I don't know, Miss Julie. She always had so much fire, so much. Drive. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not being very clear. They're there. It's okay. <laughs> He's like, they're there, dear. <laughs> Roy, do you not hear the music going? We still have things to investigate. What does that say? Fox Millinery s Supply. Hat box. There's more pills on the ground. Looks like barbiturates. Uh, yes. Quality English smoking jacket. I don't know anyone under 45 who would wear one. Or why it will well, I mean... The ladies are. Oh, can we have a moment? I really like this <laughs> this room screen. It's really pretty. Um, but I mean, I can think of a reason why it would be in a ladies' room, but I, it doesn't. It does seem a little bit out of place. Anything? Nothing here. Excuse me. Oh no, am I stuck again? Why am I stuck again? This happened. Before! Why am I stuck? Oh no! Oh, got myself unstuck. That was good. I, I kind of wanted to check over there. Could you, could you maybe move, Roy, please? Roy. Roy. Thank you. <laughs> like, you're picking up something over and over again. Barbiturates. What else is rattling around in this thing? Oh. We should speak to a doctor. Prescribing both drugs would make her life a roller coaster. Take one capsule daily. I was I was reading that Cole. But I suppose it's fine. Okay. Now we're done, Roy. Now we can go and talk to her housekeeper. Right? That's that's what they said. Very nice apartment. It's very nice. Look at the floors. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta stop. <laughs> okay, let's talk. I'm Detective Phelps. I'm here to try and help Julia. Do you mind answering some questions? Virginia Reynoldson, I'm just so shocked. I feel like there's something I should be doing, someone I should call. We can make those calls, ma'am. Who needs to be notified? That's just it. I don't know. Miss Julie doesn't have any family in town. Someone has to set her affairs in order. Um, Mr. Henderson, maybe? I, who else is there? I, I don't know. If you give the details to the other detectives, ma'am, they can try and get in contact. 
I like how Mr. Henderson question mark pops up because I'm like, who's Mr. Henderson? Victim's state of mind? I mean, she does look sad and concerned. Victim's state of mind. Was Miss Randall depressed about something? Upset? No more than normal. Hmm. Why is she taking all those drugs? Like the sleeping pills, right? Hang on. Yeah, she's got a bunch of sleeping pills. Normally, if you can't sleep, you might be stressed. Yeah, prescribed for troubled sleep and depression. There you go. So I'm going to go with lie, maybe? What are you hiding here, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julie was obviously disturbed about something. I have no idea what you're talking about. Then why was she taking so many sleeping pills, huh? She was taking barbiturates. She couldn't sleep. You must have seen them in her room. You've seen the pillbox, the things she hid in there. I don't know how she supported herself. Always new clothes and jewelry. She lived like a movie star, a princess. Does modeling really pay that well? I don't know, maybe. Victim's personal life? Did Miss Randall have many friends visit? I'm not sure. I only come around twice a week. But didn't we find... Yeah, the men's smoking jacket. Waist-length velvet smoking jacket. Very fancy. So lie again, I think? Why are you lying to me, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julia had men stay here. I will not speak ill of the dead. <laughs> you can't prove that. There's literally a men's smoking jacket in her bedroom. Who owns the smoking jacket? I wouldn't like to tell tales, you understand. But that's Mr. Henderson's. An older man, very distinguished looking. He seemed very much in love with her. Where would we find him? I'm sorry. I, I don't know. He said he lives in San Francisco. What's specific? Relationship with Victor. What was it like working for Miss Randall? Perfectly fine, officer. Good. <laughs> Perfectly fine. Absolutely nothing wrong at all. <laughs> Do I have anything to think she's lying? Housekeeper's statement. Maid Virginia Reynolds and testifies to Mr. Henderson living in San Francisco. Okay, so I'm going to go with doubt because she was totally not telling the truth. <laughs> Mrs. Reynoldson, it seems like there's something you want to tell me. Uh huh. She was very high strung. Lovely one moment and screaming at you the next. She wanted it all and she wanted it damn quick. Of course, being so beautiful, it seemed like she was going to get it. Not the way it's turned out, though, is it? Thanks, Mrs. Reynoldson. You've been very helpful. One of the other detectives will take your statement and then you can go home. Okay, so. The coroner said we need to be on the lookout for Surrettes on our way out. Stefan, Rusty, we'll take a look around outside and then follow up these leads. Can you get some guys to run down the jacket? You think Carruthers has called it right? He rarely gets it wrong. I don't know. I'm with Galloway. I've met enough girls in my time who can't handle their dope. Nothing there. Or there. Uh huh. It's our. Mal will be pleased. Well, that's hardly conclusive, given the number of those things we've come across recently. Mm -hmm. The autopsy will confirm it one way or another. I think our work is done here. A good-looking corpse. Achievement unlocked. We're just we're just gonna leave it here. Okay. Uh, where 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 are we going next? <laughs> like I don't know where to go now. Where is our car? Oh, it's all the way over there. Is there a street crime? Perhaps. Maybe. Perhaps. One that isn't 20 million miles away? No. I don't even think I've seen any hidden vehicles in a while. 
I mean, I only had to collect like a hundred vehicles. I'm assuming that you need to be getting into ve parked vehicles a lot, <laughs> which I like, I don't care if you're a police officer. If you just started randomly getting into cars and then getting back out again, that would look a little weird. <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to get the collect all the vehicles thing done. Like, I would have to make some of these poor people get out of their car. <laughs> I survived the war for this. Yes, you ah. did. That's that cop. Seems like a baby cat. Yeah. Okay, the dress store. That makes sense. She was told to come visit, right? Maybe she was a model there. Upmarket Ladies Clothing Boutique. Okay, before we start moving, let me get an idea of where I'm going. It looks like it's behind me. No, we'll go out to the left and then a left on Sunset and then maybe Roy will be done talking. Oh, is he not going to say anything at all? Keep going straight. Bukowski, Galloway, quite the little reunion in there. Almost brought a tear to my eye. They're right. good police. How would you know? You got promoted so fast, you barely had time to learn their names. <laughs> Let me fill you in. Bukowski's a pushover. Galloway's a drunk. You could learn a thing or two from both of them. Please. They couldn't work a vice case if their life depended on it. I don't see why they'd be any better or worse at it than me. I noticed you said better. Hubris disguised as humility. Kind of your trademark, don't you think? Why do you always twist everything? Galloway's got nothing to prove. He's been on homicide for years. And he's welcome to it. You're a terrier, Phelps, and that's what I need. Not some old bulldog who can't get up a flight of stairs without coughing up his lunch. Excuse you. Although, it was only my fault. You can no see way. these people, right? No, I can't see them at all. Straight ahead. <laughs> I'm completely lost. No, I'm not lost. I'm just, I'm just taking the long route. Straight over. You know, I did my Bukowski on traffic, and, you know, Rusty is, is, is a wee bit of a drinker <laughs> and has has a lady issues. <laughs> Take the next left. But, like, I would say you are a far dirtier cop than the two of them combined. Straight through the next intersection. I'm just saying. Keep going straight. Straight ahead. I want to know this lady just walking in the, in the street for no reason. Take the next right turn. Connell's paper supply. Okay. Next left. Next. Straight over the next intersection. Oh, we're almost there. I can see it. Nightmare Alley. Um, here. Maybe. Here it is. There it is. I see it. I see it. We're here. <laughs> the scene dress store, 3.04 p.m. Grown men playing at being boys. Looks very fancy. Well, hello. What can I help you with today? Can I can I go dress shopping? There's a party. Well, you can only dream. Are are you a worker here? No. Um, hello. I guess it, it was her. You look like you were a big pain in the neck. Now I have a much lower opinion of you. So what next? Oh, she's right here. We need to have words with the owner. Find out what <laughs> kind LAPD, of employee Julia Randall was. I hope Randall I haven't was. done anything wrong. No, ma'am. We're making some inquiries about Julia Randall. Does she work here? No, I had to let her go. Is she in some sort of trouble? She was found dead this morning. Victim's employment history. Yeah, why did you have to let her go? Do tell. 
How long had Julia worked as a model? Well, she worked in New York before coming here. She was a very beautiful girl. Okay, I don't think I can disprove that in any way, and... Yeah, I'm gonna go with truth. Could you tell us why you let Miss Randall go? Husbands sometimes come in here with their wives. When Julia Randall modeled, the husbands were often more interested in her than they were their wives' dresses. Oh. The wives weren't happy, and neither was I. Did she have any close friends here? Actually, yes. Heather Swanson. Would you like to speak with her? I'd like that very much. Please don't inform her about Miss Randall's death. Very well, officer. Heather, these gentlemen are from the LAPD. I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. I understand that you worked with Julia Randall, Miss Swanson? Yes. Julia helped me get my job here. She's not in any kind of trouble, is She's she? She's a hellraiser, isn't she? Lives a fast life. Oh, no. Maybe Mrs. Stanley would call her that, but I wouldn't. She's full of life, a <laughs> wonderful company. That's a lovely engagement ring. Do you like it? Henry gave it to I'm me. I'm very interested in engagement rings. Do you mind if I take a closer look? We're not going to steal you, or steal it from you. Kind of. That's some pearl, Miss Swanson. Would have cost Henry a fortune. He must really love you. Seems like a random thing to want to look at. Although, what was it? Uh, Julia had that fancy ring on her as well. Let's see. She seems perfectly fine. Okay, so relationship with victim. How did you meet Julia? I was introduced through my fiancé, Henry Arnett. Okay. Sure. I'm, I'm watching. It's her fiancé who killed her. <laughs> going to be some weird love triangle. Anyway, truth, I think. Henry is your beau. Tell us about it. Yeah. Yes, he is. Henry has a fashion business. He and Julia have been friends for years. Informed of Mr. Henderson? Are Miss Randall and Mr. Henderson engaged? Who's he? I don't want to scare the lady, so let's go with truth. She was wearing a sapphire engagement ring. Someone must have given it to her. She never mentioned a man named Henderson to me. Hmm. That's all for now, Miss Swanson. Could you ask your fiancé to visit Hollywood Police Station? It would be very helpful to our inquiry. Now, wait a moment. I don't think I'll pass on that message until you tell me why you're asking all these questions. Julia Randall was found dead this morning. What? Oh. oh, I can't believe it. She was so full of life. That was a really huge ring. Like, it was very, very flashy. I really don't know where all this is going. Like, I'm still gonna go Love Triangle. Um, where are we, where are we going next? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know where else we have to go. So I'm going to look for a street crime. There probably isn't one, but you know, it doesn't hurt to look anyway. Okay. Um, escape. And then New York, New York. Location. Ah, yes. The doctor's office. Now, where is he? Looks to be behind us again. Uh, he is behind us. Well, we'll go the long, long way and let Roy ramble at us. Nice move, not telling old Sweet Lips in there about her friend taking the big jump till we were half out the door. Very slick. I figured we'd get more out of her that way. You're learning, Phelps. We'll make a vice cop out of you yet. Uh, okay, thanks. I just thought that was like standard practice not to tell people that they died until like you've gotten some basic information out of them in case they. Straight ahead. You know, have a, have, a, have a bit of an emotional breakdown because somebody they knew died. Straight through the next intersection. And Go straight over. Okay. <laughs> What's the 
surprise, Roy doesn't yell at me for. All right, doctor's office. Ooh, bakery. Showman's practice, 3.19 p.m. It's absolutely fireproof. Richer, cleaner, and bolder. Finest tobacco in America. Smoke, valor, cigarettes, most doctors. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, I'm assuming it was here, right? Bargains? In print shop stationery. Aha, here we go. It is doctor's. Well, it's an office building of some sort. Uh, it doesn't say there. Fifth floor. Here, Stoneman, office 505. That's a long, oh, there's an elevator. A long ways up. What's this? Back door. Parking lot. Okay, makes sense. You know, what I notice is there's no lock on the outside of these doors. So how do you lock up at night? Just, just wondering. was the fifth floor. I swear, if we locked up every doctor in this town, Vice would be able to work half days. <laughs> well. That was really fast. Mueller and Associates, Galand, Keys, Palmer, and Stoneman. I just want to see who else is on this floor. 505. Three. Oh, five. Okay. Yes, sir, your name? LAPD, we'd like to see Dr. Stoneman. Dr. Stoneman is with a patient. Would you like to wait? No, we wouldn't. Tell him we want to see him now. There's no need to be rude. Save it, sister. <laughs> Dr. Stoneman, I have some gentlemen from the LAPD here to see you. Um, send them in, please. I'll, uh, I'll see this patient again after they've left. Your investigation is much more important than my sciatica. I'm just in pain here. Leave me alone. Well, aren't you grumpy pants? You little kitchenette. Huh. Ah, I Nathan, was like... Dr. Stoneman, we are investigating the death of one of your patients, Julia Randall. I'm very sorry to hear that. Do you mind if we ask you some questions about Ms. Randall? Uh, um... Not if it doesn't compromise doctor-patient privilege, detective. Doesn't that expire when they die? I'm not sure the actual rules on all that. I'm not sure doctors or lawyers are sure on the rules on that. Okay, relationship with victim. How well did you know Miss Randall? Barely at all. Um, she'd only been a patient six months or so. Um. Yeah, you you did give her a prescription though. So you did have to know her somewhat well, correct? Prescriptions, of course, of amphetamines made out to Julia in July. Um, let's go. We'll go with lie and try and try the prescriptions. Julia Randall has been your patient for nearly a year. I'm sure you know that. Do you doubt my veracity, detective? Do you have access to my patient records? Yeah, so Benzedrine prescription, July. Oh, yeah, it's 1947, right? So, yeah, July 46, fibber, fibber, fibber. Your prescriptions contradict you, doctor. Miss Randall was in the fashion business, as you probably know. Mm -hmm. She was jumped up on Benzedrine by day and knocked down by sleeping pills at night. I, I, I told her to slow up, but no. Life was too short for her. And you supplied the prescription for the Benzedrine. It's not illegal, detective. A lot of young women in her line of work use it for weight loss. 
could have, you know, not given it to her if you were that concerned, but then she just found another doctor who maybe... Anyway, moving on. Additional medications. You wrote Julia Randall a prescription for Benzedrine. How can you account for that? Miss Randall was in the uh, fashion business. She wanted to control her weight. Can I just not believe anything he says? Lie? Or I, I'll go with doubt. Benzedrine is addictive, as I'm sure you know, doctor. As I warned her, but she was determined. She said she needed it to control her appetite. Sounds like you knew her pretty well. I knew the line of work she was involved in. That'll be all for now, Dr. Stoneman. We'll be in touch. How many other um, models come and visit you for so-called diet drugs? Yeah, I know there's no music, but I can poke around, so Nothing why not? Nothing significant. What's this over here? Okay. I Apparently, I need to use the phone. Excuse me, I'm going to use your phone right in front of you, okay? <laughs> Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. Detective. Any messages? Yes, Detective. The coroner's been asking to speak to you. I can connect the call if you like. Please, thank you. Al? Cole, can you get over here? I just finished the autopsy. Wow. Sure thing, Mal. We'll be right over. That was, like, super fast. I know game mechanic, but, like, I can still tease it, right? Where did the doctor go? What are you doing over there? Oh, medical records. Paula, are you like destroying something perhaps? Things you don't want us to see? Hmm? Nope. Still the wrong floor. You push the second floor. We need the first floor. Ground floor. <laughs> All right, Rory, keep up. The old boy is lying. About what? I don't know. He looked relieved when you said she was dead. That's a strange reaction to have to the death of a young patient. It is. I. That's good on you for noticing, Roy, because I certainly didn't. Or was it resigned because he knew the way that she was living her life, she was going to end up dead? Perhaps, maybe? All right, come on, let's go, there we go. Don't you honk at me. No, let's, let's, uh... Street crime? Probably not. I feel like the other one popped up at night and I feel like some of these may be on a, somewhat of a, you have between these hours to do them and 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 I, I i haven't done that okay it could be the now, now we now we need to go to the hollywood receiving hospital straight ahead okay have you noticed how croakers only pull out the physician patient privilege card when they got some to hide there are certain things people have a right to keep private until it gets in the way of police work and it's only private when it suits them a couple of drinks and every doctor I've met will spill your darkest secrets in a heartbeat. It doesn't sound like very good Straight doctors. on. Just saying. I'm just going to go with it's a... Take the next left. It's a complicated issue and not as cut and dry as anybody would like it to be. I'm just going to say Roy's car is my least favorite of all of them. I just feel like I'm literally driving a boat. Okay, Hollywood receiving hospital, 3.35 p.m. I feel like he did that autopsy in like three hours. I suppose it's possible, right? But highly unlikely. Again, game mechanic, but I kid. <laughs> uh, this way usually, I think. Yeah, 
here we go. You've got... Oh, Roy, I have some information for you. You have two bodies in here. You're the only person enjoying this, Mal. Get on with it. The bruising <laughs> confirms two sets of hands, so we have two killers. Death was caused by heart failure due to an overdose of morphine. Have you dragged us down here to gloat? We already heard your theory. We agree that she was murdered. Yes, of course. I have something else to show you. All right, Mal, what gives? The dead guy's name is Jimmy LeBlanc, career burglar. He came in this morning. Someone stove his head in with a lump of two by four. So what? Good riddance. I found two serrets in his jacket pocket. Wow. Hang on a minute, Roy. <laughs> what is this thing about? No sign of morphine use and no metabolized morphine in his blood. Scratch marks on his face. Which could be from getting his head remodeled. Time of death, Mal. Maybe an hour or two after the Randall girl. So you're saying Laughing Boy here could be one of our killers? That's a hell of a long shot. Thanks, Mal. We'll check it out. I found something else. <laughs> I can't help it. Roy's like, wow, his dry sarcasm and like completely not caring about like his actual job and solving murders and stuff. It's just my awkward giggles. Okay, anyway, let's investigate. Oh, gosh. That was, that looks horrible. And then. Oh, sweetie. Oh. Okay, you made a look at something over here. Sorry, I don't play. I don't know if it's significant. His wallet was empty. The only other things he was carrying were the harmonica and the morphine. Hmm. Carruthers. Yeah, he's here. I'll send him over. They have a guy called Henry Arnett in interview two for you next door. Let me know how you get on. Sure, Mal. And thanks for the lead. Sure, Mal. Thanks for the lead. <laughs> he's such a... God, he's just that guy. Like, I'm never one prone to violence, but he's the guy that you want to punch in the face for just being ugh. Right? <laughs> It's just so bratty and annoying. Ugh. I got the jitters. So again. I wonder, I, I do wonder, Henry Ar Ar Arnett, I think is what it was. I'd be shocked if that's correct. But Henry Henderson, are they the same guy? Love triangle. I'm still, that's my theory. I'm sticking to it. It's totally not accurate, but like, that's all I got. Uh, I don't care. Where, is it interview two, maybe? Mr. Arnett, I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. Thanks for coming in. Call me Henry. It's the least I could do. Terrible news about Julia. Oh, that's right. They were friends. Yeah, relationship with victim. How well did you know Julia Randall? Vaguely. I'm in the clothing business, and Julia occasionally modeled for me. Really? Because the way everybody makes it sounds, you guys were friends like forever. Do I have a... Henderson... I mean, like, I could, but I don't think it's going to do me any favors. I'm going to go with doubt because I don't think I have a modeling job? Fashion, modeling, career... Okay, we'll go with doubt. He's asking whether you banged her in a chuck on the shoulder fraternity kind of way. I'm engaged to be married. It wouldn't be polite. Answer the question. This will remain private. Heather won't have to know. <sighs> yes. We had relations. I knew it. <laughs> knew it. Informed of Mr. Henderson. Are you Mr. Henderson? Miss Randall's landlady said she was seeing an older man. Oh. Could have been. Fair enough. I wasn't privy to all the details of Julia's private life. I forgot about that tidbit. Not, not, he's not Henry Henderson. Um. Hmm. Let me see. Is he telling the truth? Doubting Mr. Henderson living in San Francisco? Uh, why? Henry, I don't like when people lie to me. She was seeing a man named Henderson. You know who I'm talking about. Easy on, detective. I may have heard of Henderson, but I don't know his full name. I think he's from New York or someplace back east. 
Oh, well, we know he's from San Francisco from the housekeeper statement, so that's not accurate, is it? That's funny. Julia told her cleaning lady that he lived in San Francisco. Okay, you got me. I don't know where he's from. Julia wanted money. She always wanted money. She thought she could get something from this guy. She was wearing a distinctive engagement ring. You think she might have convinced him to buy it for her? Maybe he did, yeah. Maybe he and Julia were getting serious. <laughs> Burglary suspect LeBlanc. That's the dead guy from the morgue, right? Anything else you can do? No I don't way. know about this guy. Burglary suspect LeBlanc, okay. Ever heard of a Jimmy LeBlanc? No. Should I have? Is, is he an entertainer or something? I mean, I do appreciate how they make it kind of so obvious sometimes when they're like, no, should I have? Why would I? Is he an entertainer? No. Doubt. Yes. So you wouldn't have any reason <laughs> to believe that LeBlanc would be involved in Julie Randall's murder? If this guy is a criminal, he, he might have been involved. But like I said, I've never heard of this LeBlanc character. I don't believe you. <laughs> Heather told us that you were in fashion. That's right. Now Steve Tor strips off me at the grand jury. Case Director Arnett Clothing and Some kind of traveling yeah. salesman? Once I got out of the Corps, I used my... You were in the Marines? Sure. I'm proud of it. The Fighting Sixth. You were in the Sixth Marines? Yes. I was a captain. Which company? Uh, various companies. We had a lot of casualties. Which engagements? Okinawa. A couple of other places. Right, right. That will be all for now, Henry. You've been very helpful. Rut row. I feel like Cole's gonna be like, yeah, the six wasn't in Okinawa. That son of a bitch was never in the Marines. Why'd you let him off the hook? Because we're giving him a couple of minutes before we start tailing him. Arnett is an amateur. We need to find out who killed the girl. Can you pass this on to Bukowski? Have him check the place out and go through his records. Sure, I'll pass it on. Thanks. Can you also have R and I run the records on a Jimmy LeBlanc and find out who was his last arresting officer? Have him get in touch via KGPL when they have some information. Oh no, we gotta tail someone again. In a car. <laughs> He's in that car at the lights. Go on. Oh, miles on the clock, achievement unlocked. He was squirming like a worm in there. Don't you love it when they pull the war hero excuse? Actually, maybe you don't. Trying to concentrate, Roy. Don't mess me up. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Can you quit driving like a jackass already? I'm I'd have expected a cad like Arnett to be a better liar. Concentrating. I'm here. I'm just trying not to mess it up. Very quiet, everybody. <laughs> we're, we're tailing someone. All right, turn right. If you guys don't hurry it up. Where are you taking us, Henry? I'm getting closer. Catch up or the suspect where they escape. I'm catching up. Oh, crap. Sorry. Oh, I got a tail of suspect. I wish he would get to where it is we're going already. That idiot never stepped foot in Okinawa. I'd be surprised. We 
I'll just wait to turn left here. Oh no, there he is. We're just gonna go to the hot dog vendor right here. Are you gonna park it right there? He's not moving. Okay. Second hand, good. He needs money and fast. Get in there and find out what he pawned. I'll stick with him, see how he intends to spend the money. Too much slack. Gotta get closer. Huff it, Phelps. I'll bring the okay. car around when I'm done here. All right. Well, uh... Oh, no. Well, not to be dramatic, but I, I am at time. So I'm going to pause here. So on Saturday, <laughs> we will pick back up mid-tailing um, on foot of the... I'm sure perfectly fine upstanding citizen of Henry Arnett and, and see what happens next. So as always, thank you so very much for watching. Please do keep yourselves safe and I will see you again on Saturday with another new Ellie Noir video.